How's it going? Charles Botenston here. Today we're going to be talking about townhouses and why you should buy one. Uh, obviously, totally different than regular condos and co-ops in New York City. When people talk about homes, you know, that's the way that I discuss it is, is it doesn't matter whether it's $500,000 or $14 million. I always say it's a home. Okay, and the reason being is that really outside of New York City is that at $500,000, you actually are buying a home. At $14 million, you're definitely buying a home. You're not really buying a condo in a building that you can only get there through an elevator, which is kind of funny when you actually think about it. I can only get to my home when I take an elevator. It might not be a private elevator. So first of all, let's talk about townhouses, why they're different. Number one is the real property. This week we discussed the co-op condo, condo. So condos are real property, you get a deed, you own it in a co-op, it's a stock and lease. That's not something I'm gonna talk about today that you could go watch that video. But essentially real property, in other words, you own it, okay? And especially with the townhouse is that you're actually responsible for everything. Okay, in a building, it's really between the four walls, you're really covered by insurance in most cases. Insurance, your homeowner, homeowner's insurance. And then outside of the four walls, when it comes to the elevator, the common spaces, in other words, the hallway, the roof, the lobby, things like that, the facade, is covered by the building's insurance or by the building. Okay, it's not your responsibility, individual responsibility. You buy a townhouse, it's like buying a house, obviously. Uh, but a lot of people going into that, they kind of don't want that responsibility. Actually, one of the most expensive homes was just sold on my block, 52, I don't know, it, it sounds kind of low, actually. $52 million, it went into a bidding wars cash. We don't know the buyers, but it's literally across from my building, and, or right across from my apartment where I live. And it was an old school. So they bought it for $50 million cash, and they spent two years renovating. They, they have a, a pool, a roof, a, dining area, bowling alley, it's insane, it's crazy. So obviously not part of a housing association. One of the biggest things is that the engineer's inspection, when you're going in and you're looking to purchase or even if you're looking to sell, you wanna make sure that you have a couple things ready for the engineer's inspection, which is not common in condos and co-ops. It's something that, you know, when people say, should I bring in an inspection? Totally different than an engineer's inspector, but I, I don't recommend it because what are you really gonna find? If it's a massive apartment and it's 13,000 square, say 3,000 square feet, or if it's a really old loft, or if it's downtown, or there's multiple levels, or it has a rooftop, yeah, maybe you bring in an engineer and you check the stability, and obviously if there's any leaks, you wanna make sure you have this, they have this little moisture kind of thing that they, they can look around, and, and ironically enough, it, it put a deal that I'm in, in jeopardy, uh, which is not fun to talk about, but it's been very, very uh, time consuming on everyone's part because they found a little bit of moisture and they don't know where it's coming from and nobody wants to take responsibility, so that's another story. But you want an engineer's report for that for that exact case. Obviously, um, outside of the city, you have argon, you have mold, you have as asbestos inside the city. It's pretty much the same thing is you want to find out the foundation and obviously you are responsible for anything. So as a buyer, you wanna obviously get a uh, report about, it in, especially in the city, is that if you want any repairs, it's totally different. You know, if, if you wanna repair on your house, you don't have to go to the DOB, you don't have to get approval by the city if, if it's landmark, which we'll talk about. It depends on also, you know, the legal aspects, which is the, the townhouse has its own CO, Certificate of Occupancy. And if you did anything, and that's permissible per floor. So in other words, the, the ground floor could be uh, retail. It could be available for a bar area or a restaurant or something like that. And then everything else is residential. It could be even retail. It could be a top part could be condos or you live in the top part and it's a single family residence with commercial space below. There's so many different types of zoning and it's zoning in the area as well. And we'll talk about all of that. And you also have a separate bill for everything, electric, water, plumbing, heating. Not only that, you also have insurance, you have trash pickup, you know, you have taxes on it, which is obviously way more expensive, a separate tax bill as well. And any issues that you have with your taxes, you can go to the city, which it's up to you if you can actually go into the city, successfully lobby that your home is not worth, which we'll talk about in a second, your home is not worth the assessed value. So if it's not worth the assessed value and, and they say, okay, it's actually worth less, then obviously your taxes come down. You have to have a significant case 
to do that and also recommend that you hire an attorney because sometimes they have you know, expediters and everything, anything like that. Zoning issues, let's go into this. So obviously if it was something before, say it was a multifamily residence or mixed use, so mixed use is obviously it's, it's, it's uh, re residential and it's commercial. Or if it was multifamily, in other words, it was you know three apartments and now it's one. You wanna make sure that the new CO, certificate of occupancy, is updated. Because a lot of people do the work, but they don't tell anyone. And then you're buying in and you're like, oh, this is great. I have a single family residence. And then you're about to close and they say, actually, the owners that have it right now, they didn't actually get the niece, the new CEO. So in other words, they didn't get approval on that. There's a lot of people that get screwed right at the end because they either level the commercial space and it's still mixed use and then they turn the whole thing into a single family or they turn it into a multifamily. In other words, multifamily is you, you have one kitchen, one bathroom, and then you slice it into individual apartments, which is obviously multifamily. If it's landmark, that's a whole different story. I, I just got a, off a call and he's looking to sell early next year, but he's in a landmark building. And that was one of the biggest things is that he said, listen, the windows are old. It's the number one thing that people are gonna be talking about because it's wood windows that are single pane. So in the summer, it's gonna be really hot. In the winter, it's gonna be really cold and it just doesn't look good. I said, that's our number one priority. All the way until when we put it on the market, we have to get landmark approval to be able to replace the windows. Sometimes they say yes or no. Sometimes they say you could replace the whole thing. Sometimes they, have, they say you have to replace it, but it looks exactly the same. It's all individual cases, but if you're in a landmarked area, West Village, Tribeca, Soho, uh, some parts of Chelsea, some parts of Greenwich Village. In a landmarked area, especially in my area, it's really hard to do anything because there's an entire committee just lobbying against anyone that wants to do anything. And that's why there's not much new construction because they have a whole committee of old people and God bless their hearts that don't want the area to change. And as as usual, and they, they just say they can't change anything. It has to be the exact same way. So converting, there's a lot of things we'll go over. Uh, and obviously each each one of these has a, a totally different video. So air rights is the amount of floors that you could add on to a current structure. So in Midtown, so air rights is something that essentially you could buy from your adjacent neighbors. The city recently said you can do it within a certain radius of a building. In other words, if, and, and honestly, that, that is as worthy of a value of the air rights. So here's the example I'm bringing up. So there's a building called the Sycamore in, in Murray Hill. The Sycamore, to be able to build, I think 15 stories, they had to buy all the townhouse rights for, from this one to this one to this one, all in a row to be able to build 13 stories and they had to add FAR, which is Florida Area Ratio, which I'll bring up in a second. But they had to do that individually. They had to go to the first one. They had to buy their air rights. Then they had to go to the next one to buy their air rights. And they kept on buy buying air rights to be able to build up on their structure. If you don't have any air rights, you can't build up. And if your neighbors don't have any air rights, you can't build up. You can't buy their air rights to then uh, build up. And it's actually a smart idea because if, imagine that any area uh, is allowed a, just you could go as high as you can, as, as high structurally as you can, or as, as much as the city is willing to give you rights to build up, you're gonna have all these townhouses and then a massive 40-story building. Yes, I know there's parts of the city that have that, but it actually keeps the integrity of the neighborhood. I like that Upper West Side, same thing. You have just rows, of townhouse row, a lots, lots of area. Florida area ratio, this is also a building on the Upper West Side, uh, 250 West 90th, is that it's a duplex building. I don't think it was a conversion, I think it was a, I think it was a new construction but they didn't have the Florida area ratio. So in other words, they have a duplex area, but they couldn't actually make the, the top part of the duplex in the condo all the way to the window. So it's not a true duplex. So in other words, you have a, a ground floor, which has the kitchen and the living room, and then you have the bedroom up top, but there's a whole open space down to the, the living room. And the reason they have that is that the building wasn't allowed Florida area ratio to go all the way to the wall. So it wasn't a true duplex. It was a duplex, but it wasn't a true cutoff with a bedroom upstairs. Uh, it's a very interesting layout and it, it still obtains the value, but if you could add all of that well, that flooring to the window, prices would be probably 40% more expensive in all of that. Uh, and that's obviously with height and 
you need a permit, obviously, to do that. So setback lines, that's how close you are to the boundary line. So in other words, how close you are to your neighbors. Obviously, uh, some buildings are, they're adjoined, so it's known as party lines. They're right next to each other. And then there's setback lines. In other words, you have to be 10 feet or five feet or three feet or whatever from the property lines. Uh, and that's in all areas. And that's if you build a structure in the back, that could be a pond, it could be a pool, it could be uh, a shed, it could be something like that. You have to be a certain amount of area from the property lines. Classification. Obviously, we'll go into classification and SRO really quick. So classification essentially means what's the area classified mainly as what, you know, business district, you know, in, I, I think it's Austin. They have just the weirdest zoning. You'll, you'll walk through and you'll just have just a house and then a building, like a commercial building. And then you'll have a small house and then a, a retail space or a mall. And it's like, there's the zoning is so messed up. It's just, it's crazy. So. I actually like New York City zoning. Obviously, some people are a little against it because they can't build as much as they want to or, they're, or they feel the city's not open to building as much as they want to. SROs, you don't see them as single room occupancies. You don't really see them as much anymore, but if you are buying a single room, so in other words, you had an owner in one room and you had workers in other rooms, I usually shared a bathroom and, and a shower and things like that as a neutral area. And you need a certificate of non-harassment. Very important is that you need to see, <laughs> there's uh, stories out there where landlords to, you know, cause you have a rent regulated or rent controlled tenant in there. So to get them out illegally, they would actually send vermin, in other words, rat or mice or, ter or something in there, not termites. Uh, but something in there and people would just leave. They would just not want to be there because obviously they, <laughs> you know, they have a bunch of critters running around. They would also turn off the hot water. They would turn off the heat. It was just very illegal, act very illegal activities by the, by the landlords. So obviously certificate of not harassment. In other words, they left on their own accord or they passed away. Um, so they, you need a certificate saying that everyone in the building, you know, for them to convert from an SRO to another certificate, certificate of, of occupancy for, single family, multifamily, things like that. We'll go down this really quick. So title issues. So there's five title issues that you have to be worried about. Number one is violations. The ECB, which is the Environmental Control Board, they have violations, sidewalk violations. They have, they want to feel special a lot of times and they will, they will get you for a lot of things. You know, water, plumbing. Um, you know, I said it here with uh, sidewalk. They have, they have tons of violations. It's usually during construction or renovation or when you have contractors around. The title, you have to confirm that the title insurance company is up to date with no current violations. The magnitude, if there are any violations, how do you actually you know, bump that off of you? off of the title so there are no violations because no buyer is actually going to buy if there are violations because then they have to take over. Certificate of occupancy, we already talked about that. It has to be current and obviously if you did any kind of alterations, you need a new one. In other words, if you went from single family to multifamily, multifamily to single family or you had mixed use, things like that. If you have a TCO, TCO is a, is a temporary certificate of occupancy and essentially is that a purchaser is not going to assume a TCO building. Uh, if it's a new construction, you you know, obviously move-ins and closings and things like that can't actually happen until you get a full certificate of occupancy. But with the TCO is that no buyer is going to assume the responsibility of cl completing the work to get the CO. So you're going to have to be the one that actually goes out and gets the C of O certificate of occupancy survey. So that's the, the reading that the property does not encroach on any of the, the, you know, if it's other properties around, whether it's behind you or your neighbors, obviously we talked about that before, which is how far from the actual property lines is the building are the other structures. A buyer is going to want to get that before you even go into contract, because if there are any violations, the buyer is now assuming that, res that role and responsibility and it may delay obviously the closing because the buyer is going to make sure that the seller takes care of it. Party wall agreements. This is always fun. So especially in New York City because there's a lot of buildings that adjoin and are right next to each other. When one building comes down, you kind of see them lattice up steel structures and they, they uh, make sure that it's stable and supportive and everything like that. You'll, you'll see it downtown in Soho, especially in Soho. But a lot of the buildings, they are adjoined. It's known as a party line. So in other words, if there is a foundational crack, if there is a leak, if there is something wrong with one of the buildings, there is actually something called the party line or the party wall agreement, which is where, what do you take care of? 
okay, what does your neighbor take care of? You know, sometimes, especially with the foundation, it could get very costly. There's cracks, uh, whether it's a leak, whether it is something else, you know, especially when it comes to mold and everything else. It's very common that properties adjoin each other because they use each other's stability to actually be held up. Uh, you don't have a lot of townhouses just stand still in by themselves. And if they do, if it's a st single structure, uh, the responsibility is obviously falls on the owner of both townhouses or if it's building next door like a bar or commercial space or retail. Um, so you want to review that with your attorney before going into contract as well. What's the agreement with your neighbors? And obviously if there are you know, encroachment issues, in other words, you're off of the pro property lines, you, know, you still have the party wall agreement. You don't actually have to be joined together to have party wall agreements. And the last thing is tax assessment. So obviously you get your own tax bills. And if you see a sharp increase, that could be because the owner renovated it and you're buying the renovation. And because there was a renovation, the city went in and they assessed it at a higher value. And obviously if, if the value is assessed at a higher level, then that means they obviously increase the taxes. So you wanna retrieve the tax bills, make sure there's no sharp increases. If there are sharp increases and you don't agree with it, you can fight it. It's gonna be long, arduous. Get an attorney, talk to an attorney. You have to have a really airtight case because in most cases, you know, if you're saying your townhouse is not worth 20 million, it's worth 15 million, that's a significant difference. But if it's 15 or 14.5, the amount of taxes that you're paying and the headache and, and hiring an attorney is just not worth it. And obviously, uh, you can get it reassessed and it makes your home more marketable. So if you do actually lower your taxes, it's something that you could, you could tell your broker, hey, listen, your broker, Tell your broker, hey, listen, we just got this actually reduced, so the taxes came down, it's lower in the area than other opposing townhouses or other opposing comparable townhouses, however you wanna structure that. But if you guys have any questions, hopefully this helped. We actually do have a takeaway PDF on this, which is way more explicit than what I talked about today. And it's a two, two and a half page PDF, depends on um, how long we actually type the entire thing up and we design it and everything like that. If you want that, hop over to bpi.live and you can download, download that for free. We're gonna have that up once this is, you know, obviously taken care of. If you guys have any questions, reach out personally, charles at votenston.com, charles at bpi.com, uh, bpi.live. Have an amazing day, and of course, with townhouses, you want to talk with attorneys, you want to talk with structural engineers, you want to, talk, you want to get a survey, you want to know the party. There's just a lot of things before you actually sign the contract, because once you sign the contract, that's gonna push the closing back if there are any issues, if there are any violations, if there is a TCO on the property, um, if, if the, the CO wasn't properly you know, given out to them, if they did convert it from mixed use to single use, things like that. So any questions, broker, and of course an attorney to make sure that you're going into it well aware of uh, what you're buying because you are responsible for it, whether you like it or not. There are no boards, there are no management companies, which is nice. But again, the responsibility falls on you. So have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.